from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Vic Kelly, Johnny, Worldwide Mutual. How's your Spanish? CC, senior. Oh, mother told me there'd be days like this. Want egg in your beer? I gotta be a linguist yet? You may have to be a lot more than that to unscramble this one. Tell me about it. Oh, uh, price is still the same, though. Get on over here, will you? Sure, but give me a little hint. I like to start worrying early. All right. Try this. William Billy Alder. The promoter? World's number one salesman? Up again, down again, Alder? The same. And at this point, he's up. Up to his ears in Venezuelan oil. We're carrying a quarter of a million life on him. Ooh, I'd settle for the premiums, Vic. How come you're worrying? You'd worry two carrying coverage that size. Especially with Alder behaving like he is. Like? Like changing his beneficiary five times in a month. What would you say that means? Means I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alder matter. Expense account item one, $1.35, the price of being taxied to Vic Kelly's office at Worldwide Mutual. For a normally easygoing fella, Mr. K had a bad case of how did I ever get into this? $250,000. That's a big policy. Big. You look like the claim's already been filed. Smile a little, Dad. Yeah, sure. At least fill me in. How much do you know about Billy Alder? Oh, just surface stuff, what the headlines say. Promoter, wildcatter, super salesman. Fellow with a flair for selling anything. Why? Well, that's what's rough. I can't give you too much more than that. He's been in a dozen different businesses, headed up a half a dozen corporations, a couple of bankruptcies, even a nasty court case. He's been flat broke and six months later been a walking blue chip. Been up and down more times than a yo-yo. Oh, that's a nice life if you can take it. But, feast or famine, he does everything big. Like the quarter of a million policy, huh? Well, it didn't seem out of line three years ago. It still doesn't. Not with the kind of money he's dragging out of the ground in Venezuelan oil. Hey, uh, this changing of beneficiaries, when did it begin? A little over a month ago. In succession, it's been his wife, his daughter, a brother, back to the wife, and... Now it's his daughter again. <laughs> Sounds like a woman trying to make up her mind about a dress. Price tag's a little different. What does it sound like to you? Give me a chance to get down there and look, will you? Well, I mean off the top of your head. Oh, sounds like he's worried. Like he shouldn't buy any long-playing records. Look, Johnny, there's a clause in the policy that lets us investigate irregularities. Go take a look. Just don't expect him to cooperate. He's a big operator type fella. I don't know. I never met him, but I like him already. What? His style. Any man who uses a slogan like, we lose a little on each deal, but think of the volume. Well, he's for me. I got to keep him alive. <laughs> Expense account item two, $329.88. Airfare and incidentals to Caracas, Venezuela. It was about noon Sunday when the big plane lazed in over the Caribbean shoreline pointed its nose for the Magida Airport in Caracas. Below us spread what's laughingly called man's handiwork, his progress. A few short years ago, it had been nothing but lush green jungle. Then came men shouting the magic word oil, and the jungle was now disappearing as fast as they could throw up the derricks and sink the drills. Progress. A taxi to the Hotel Parayo and a good lunch adds up to item three, four bucks even. I was ready for business. Knocking around in this game, you learn a lot of ways to save steps. On another country deal, for instance, the local police chief is one person you can't ignore. He can save you more than steps, blood sometimes. He turned out to be 35-ish, bright, relaxed. They might have changed the jungle, but nothing was going to alter Jefe Velasquez's style. He took his time, even after I told him why I was here. I'm sorry about the ceiling fan, senor dollar. Oh, what's wrong with it? It's working. See, but it's old-fashioned, not like the, um, how you say, uh, air condition in Estados Unidos. No problem. I'm comfortable. With all the money from the oil, you think they may modern these offices? No. It's air conditioned in the home, in the car, but not in the office. At least this one. <laughs> A fan. Well, I'll get to it. Jefe, I get the feeling you're steering away from discussing Billy Alder. Of course. 
Then there must be a reason. See, si, because I do not want to give you the bum cow. Oh, bum steer. Uh, gracias. Uh, what I mean is there is uh, nothing to put the finger on. To look at them is a nice family with lots of money living in a big, expensive house. But you spend a couple hours there. You know, it's not that way. It's nothing you can see, but... Uh... All uh, underneath. Mm. You ever see an oil well fire, Juanito? Uh -huh. All the, the burning and burning under the ground. Then, when it's enough force, whoosh, everything explodes to the sky. It's exactly what you expect when will happen to these people. Someday. It's still, it's hard to figure exactly why. But that is all. Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate what you've given me. Now, what's the best way to get to the house? You go there, huh? That's where the job is. It's easy enough to get to. I tell you how. You mind if I ask a question, amigo? Shoot. In your own office, you got a fan or air condition? When I left him, he was even weighing the idea of spending his own money for an air condition. I went right on spending company money. For instance, item four, $39.55 deposit and first day's rental on a U-Drive automobile. A 20-minute drive over the autopista, that's a six-lane mountaintop freeway, less traffic jams, brought me to La Guiara, a clean, scrub-looking suburb on the edge of the Caribbean. The older house wasn't hard to find. Huge and impressive, it sat all by itself on a high promontory jutting out into the sea. I suddenly found that I'd become J. Dollar Intruder, because in the doorway of the house, a very luscious young lady was being enthusiastically and expertly kissed by a handsome young man. <coughs> My cough must have been pretty frightening, because the boy took off around the house like a quarter horse. Not so the girl. She glared angrily as she came toward me. I hope you're satisfied. Well, embarrassed is a better word. I'm sorry about my timing. I'll bet you are. Well, look, Miss, Happy I, uh... now that you've got something to tell my father? Well, go ahead and tell him. If you'd only slow then down a minute. And while you're at it, tell him something else. That he can hire as many detectives as he likes. It still won't keep me from seeing Paul. Well, looks like he'll need track shoes to see him now. Very funny. Assuming that was Paul. Look, I don't... Assuming... Oh, now look, lady. You never gave me a chance to explain. Not too hard to figure why he... Well, who you think I am. But I'm not. My name is Johnny Dollar, and you're right about only one thing. I do want to see your father, but not for the reason you think. Okay? But I... I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. Good. Are we friends now? I'm Peggy Alder. Yeah, I figured as much. Would you like to come in and wait, Mr. Dollar? Wait? My father isn't home at the moment. He shouldn't be over an hour, though. Fine. You won't say anything about what you saw? About Paul, I mean? Lady, the world is full of trouble. Why should I add to it? Billy Alder's selling methods may have been wild, high-pressure stuff, but there was taste in his home. And uh, when Peggy Alder put a drink into my hand and led me out to a patio, I was ready to get a drill and go oil hunting myself. Patio? It was a small, exclusive, man-made mountaintop 600 feet down to the Caribbean on three sides. If you were going to have troubles, this was the place to ponder them. Peggy Alder still didn't trust me completely. Inexpertly, she tried to dig out my reason for being there. Gave up after a while, then excused herself when her father showed up an hour later. I'm glad you're here, Dollar. What's wrong? Oh, uh, just surprised. Guess I expected to be tossed out. Why? <laughs> kind of delicate asking a man why he changes beneficiaries like some men change suits. I've read the policy. Your company is allowed to ask. We appreciate your feeling that way. But it says nothing about my having to answer. No, no that's right, it doesn't. But it's hard not to draw conclusions. Such as? You're afraid somebody is, shall we say, gunning for you. But you don't know who. Am I right? Is that what your company thinks, too? Well, they don't think anything. But they'd like to know. Do you enjoy your trip down, Mr. Dollar? Uh -huh. Well, if I take it, I've worn out my welcome. Sorry. No, no, no. Sit down. I told you I was glad you're here. Then you shouldn't mind a couple of questions. I'll tell you nothing, Mr. Dollar. I admit nothing. Is that clear? Is it? Look here. Your company has a good deal to lose by my death. We just want to be sure nobody's thinking of it as a commercial venture. Then stay here, Mr. Dollar. Here, in this house. Keep me alive. Mm -hmm. 
Behind the calm, controlled demeanor, Billy Alder was loaded with fear. The worst kind of fear. The grinding, implacable kind of terror that for some reason has to be hidden. Two hours later, my bags had been sent for, and I was comfortably settled in the guest room only slightly larger than Pennsylvania Station. By dinner time that night, the only other people I'd seen in the house were the servants. Alder, his daughter, and I sat down to eat alone. I must apologize for Mrs. Alder's absence, Mr. Dollar. She went to the bullfights today. She's staying in town for dinner with the others. Uh, the others? We have several guests staying with us. Charming people, Mr. Dollar. Wait till you meet them. I think we can do without that kind of talk, Peggy. Are you defending them, Father? Guests. Don't you mean leeches, parasites? That'll do. At least they'd have the manners not to start a thing like this in front of Mr. Dollar. You may be excused any time you like. Gladly. Incidentally... Thank you for disobeying my orders to keep Paul Kincaid away from this house. You... you told him after you promised... Mr. Dollar told me nothing. You seem to forget that servants have eyes and ears. Sorry. Didn't mean to embarrass you, Mr. Dollar. That's all right. (laughs) Kids. Can't do anything with them these days. Headstrong, no sense of values. (laughs) Not Paul Kincaid. An oil field foreman. Can you see him fitting in as Peggy's husband in the Billy Alder Enterprises? Quite a step up, if he can make it. Believe me, he never will. After dinner, Alder and I headed for that fabulous patio. I hoped he would open up, but he kept the talk general. Charming, witty, but simply conversation. Truthfully, I wasn't too unhappy, because the setting was one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. I couldn't take my eyes away from the lights far below. The glittering shoreline stretching from Carinero all the way to Puerto Cabello. That's when it happened. (laughs) The bullet smashed into the wooden canopy support just inches from Alder's head. So close that the splinters flew, buried themselves in his cheek. Mr. Alder, you all right? I I think so. Stay here. I raced back through the house, headed for the front entrance as fast as I could. Outside, I tried to stare through the darkness into the only direction from which that shot could have come, the rolling jungle slope of the promontory. Sure, it looked deserted, but I knew it wasn't. Someone had to be out there, with five more bullets in his gun and murder in his heart. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, one man dances attendance, another dances death, and a woman calls the tune. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Tony Barrett. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>